Okay, good afternoon, everybody. It's Comics Workshop with Merrick Bennett. Uh, thanks to patrons, first off, over at the Patreon. It is noon on a Friday, I think. That's what they tell me. Hey, I brought you a snowball because the snow is finally here in New Hampshire. I have to keep this away from my artwork, though. I'll put it in the flower pot. All right. The snow is finally here in New Hampshire. And um, I was just out back with the chickadees. They are feeding. They are scarfing down bird seed out there. Um, we've been drawing a lot of animals this fall, keeping together, having adventures, making these little mini comics. So I'm, I'm starting to think about um, the holidays and I want to draw some artwork that I can share with people, sort of like these little bird cards I'm sending out to patrons over on the Patreon, uh, little blank cards that you can share with your friends and send notes to people with. So I'm kind of in that mode today. I want to make a picture that, you know, maybe that maybe it's a wordless picture. Uh, maybe it's a little winter scene that I can share with friends and we can color them together or something. So I'm starting with pencil, always, always starting with pencil, right? I've got my pencil ink erase process. That's when I want to share my artwork. I always start with pencil, then I ink over that, then I erase the pencil. Um, I've got a regular sheet of paper here. I put it on a clipboard because then I can, you know, spin it around really easily. Uh, let's see. I also want to, since I'm thinking of sharing this with people, I'm probably going to like rough out some margins here. Whew, I got chilled outside with the chickadees. It is amazing how it's cold out there. And those little birds in their feathers with their little bare feet are hopping around on the trees all day. They sleep out there in the cold. It's no wonder they're eating so much bird seed, right? Because it's so cold, their source of heat comes from digesting high calorie bird seed. So I'm thinking of them. I wanna create a little picture. I'm gonna put myself into this picture though, because something really cool happened this morning. So um, let's see, instead of just bare ground here, I, I have snow and the snow is kind of like wavy. So I'm going to just draw a couple wavy lines and that'll be the edge of the snow. You notice with my pencil lines, I don't have to be very clear. I can be kind of like, I think it goes there tentative, right? Not really sure. Put a couple lines in there because the snow is all over the place. And then I'm going to rough out a little spot for myself. Let's say I'm going to be this big. You can be as big as you want on your picture. Maybe you're shorter, maybe you're taller. If you make yourself really big, it leaves less room for other things. If you make yourself really small, it leaves more room, but it might be harder to see. So something in the middle, maybe something right in the middle like that. And I'm going to make myself, I like to, when I draw myself, I like to sort of make myself, I don't know, I make myself an animal, a different animal every time. If you've drawn with me before, you know I can turn this me into a bunny rabbit just by adding two little ears. And maybe then instead of my face, I add a bunny face, right? Little nose like that. And um, um, boy, you know, I don't even have to change the shape at all. I can leave myself just as sort of a, a little round shape, like a snow bunny. Right? I'll give myself a scarf maybe. So we'll give a double line there, have it trail off the back and give it a little fringe and it becomes a scarf, right? Um, and I can put my arms here. Now, if you're not a rabbit though, like let's play around with this a little bit, the same sort of blob shape. This is what I love about cartooning. What if we give it a little different kind of a nose, different kind of ears, right? And suddenly it's a cartoon cat, I think. Let's give it whiskers too. I put out a call on the Patreon for suggestions and some of my friends down in Massachusetts suggested, uh, what did they, they suggested panda bears and um, something else. Oh, the one that jumped out at me was cats. And I thought the moment I, I saw that, I thought, oh, I'm going to draw myself as a cat today. So you could be a rabbit, you can be a cat, you can be, I don't know, Alligators are fun because they have noses coming out like this, you know, or you could be a bear. See if you can get a bear. I think a bear probably would just have rounded ears. Usually when I want to draw a bear, I'll make the ears rounded. Well, that looks sort of like a, that looks like a gopher or something. I'll give it little buck teeth. See, cartooning is really fun because it's, it's such a simple style of drawing. 
um, that you change one little detail and the whole meaning of the picture changes, right? I'm gonna put those cat ears back on. Maybe it's a buck-toothed cat. Your cat can have sharp fangs, it can have round teeth. Um, sharp fangs look a little more uh, predatorial, carnivorous. Uh, round teeth make it look a little more friendly. So what did I say at the start? Oh, this is something that happened to me today. So I'm gonna be a cat in my picture. We can add details. I'll probably add the details later on, but I just thought of stripes to make that scarf look a little more textured. And then I'm gonna put one arm coming out like this. And this isn't, you know, this is, this is cartooning. So those arms can be as long as they need to be, but I'm gonna have my cat, maybe just a little bump, bump, bump paw. And my cat is going to be holding up the bird feeder. Now my bird feeder, I don't know what your bird feeder looks like, my bird feeder is kind of like a blob with a hole in it. And then it's full of bird seed. It's like a little upside down bowl with a hole in the top. And we'll put a little branch here going through it. Your bird feeders could be round or, or, or a plate or, the, or your cat could be holding up bird seed on its paw. This is a friendly cat. It's, it's obviously a well-fed cat. So it's not like it's not hunting for birds. Um, it's actually trying to be friendly. I'm gonna tuck this other, I'm not sure what to do with this other arm. So I'm going to tuck it whoop, into a pocket there. See that, that's, that's always easier than, than uh, drawing a whole paw. Although if it's, if it's doing something with that paw or if it's going behind its back or something, that can look cute. I'm just gonna keep it as simple as possible. As simple as possible. Maybe we'll put buttons down the front of this cat. Coat. Now you can do whatever you want for your cat, rabbit, whatever. We'll give it two legs here. And the cool thing is we don't have to draw feet anymore, not till spring. We don't have to draw any feet until spring. Hey, if you have suggestions, um, stick them in the, in the chat, in the comments. Um, I'd love to get suggestions because it's, it's really helpful to have other people's imaginations helping out with these pictures. So this is a hopeful cat hoping to help the birds and I'll draw a couple chickadees here. Now the chickadees are gonna be really small. I've been drawing chickadees just cause that's who's in my backyard, these black cap chickadees. They have a black cap and a little black bib coming down below the beak there, right? We did the, I'm just drawing quickly here so I forget. Let me go back, I'll, I'll do a chickadee right up on the hip. Let's start over with that. We do sort of the, the teardrop shape that's kind of curved up, right? We give them a black cap. I put the eye in the white space. Although if you look at a chickadee, you'll, you'll see it's not quite right in the middle of that white space. I give them that little, I make it really big, the black bib there, little beak, and then a little curved wing, just kind of scribble in the wing there. Because when you see a bird from a little ways away, you can't see all those details. So it's okay to just kind of scribble that bird. Let's give it a little tail. And maybe a little music note. Maybe it's doing a little chirp. Or maybe a little two music note. Chirp, chirp. Or maybe if you know musical notation, you can write out chickadee dee dee dee. Or you can write it chickadee dee dee. However you want your birds to sing. Now this one clearly is in the air. So we'll give it two little feet there. And instead of drawing the wings on its side... Maybe the wings are like that, like a blur. When they come flying by, whoosh, 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 there's just a buzz and a burr. Little tail, maybe a little dotted line showing where they're coming from. And this is a friendly cat suddenly. This is what happened to me this morning. I went out to, to feed the chickadees and they were so hungry uh, after the big snowstorm <laughs> that they couldn't even wait. I'm sitting there holding the bird feeder and they fly up and land right on it. Let's, I like to do this with my rope. Let's bring the rope around in front of the arm, curl it up behind the arm, bring it around in front of the arm, curl it behind. See how that kind of wraps around the arm there? That's kind of fun to do. And then maybe it trails off here. Maybe the rope broke so the cat decided it's not hanging in the tree, the cat's gonna stand there. This is, remember, a friendly, a well-fed friendly cat. We'll give them lots of round teeth. Of course, if your cat has, um, and little friendly eyes, hopeful eyes, if your cat has sharp teeth, it might look like it's trying to tempt those little, um, tempt those little chickadees in. So this is a friendly, well-fed cat. Let's put a couple chickadees. 
on its arm. We'll just load this cat up with friendly chickadees. I'm going to give this chickadee, I'm going to give this one a little upside down curve eye, which shows it's very happy. They've made friends with this cat. Maybe we'll add in, um, let's, let's put a branch in here. Let's put, maybe we'll put a tree on this side here. Put it right up through here, right through the, I'm just going to curve a nice oak tree. I'll just put it right up through the top of the picture there. See, I can go outside my margins. I just want to make sure that all the important parts of my picture are within the, um, are within the frame here. And we'll give this a branch maybe coming off here. And then maybe another smaller branch and another smaller branch and on each smaller branch, some smaller branches. It's kind of fun to draw trees like this because you can kind of make up how that tree grows. Smaller branch, smaller branches on each smaller branch. It's like a little tree fractal. You can go out and look at trees too and figure out how they grow. Watch, look at their branch patterns and then come back and cartoon that. I'm gonna give this tree some rough bark We'll just draw some lines along there. That looks really nice. Now it's textured. Oh, I have to draw the edge of the snow here. There we go. You can put any branches wherever you, maybe there's some little bushes here and there, right? Maybe all over the place. Maybe there's a tree over here on this side, just to kind of balance it out. We've got a cat with birds kind of around the center here. We've got a tree on this side. Maybe we balance it out with another tree coming up here. Maybe this is a, um, a uh, birch tree. It's going to have little lines like this on it. And then whoop, little branches again coming off. I like the birch trees in like Calvin and Hobbes. They're beautiful birch trees. Look at how other artists draw trees and you can learn a lot from that. Hopeful, hopeful cat. Well, hopeful for, for cats, bird friends here. Oh, maybe a little tail. And cat needs a tail there. Maybe there's a couple, um, maybe there's some seeds scattered on the ground and there's like a junco ground feeder here. We'll do this the same way, like the upside down curved teardrop, two little feet. And this one's going to be a little beak, little eyes. This one's gonna be just um, gray on top, white on the bottom, simple. There we go. You could do some close-ups of, of how to draw different birds. That would be a lot of fun. I'm going to put one other kind in here. And, and uh, you can kind of do, you can make up birds too if you're not, you know, documenting here. Let's see. This will be a titmouse. So I'll give it a little crest here, little eye. And it'll be kind of gray all over, sort of like the junco. A little more cautious than the chickadees. They are hopping around looking for those seeds. Maybe we put a couple more birds up here. This is my gang of chickadees who hang out in my backyard. The more you draw, the faster you get. Not, not that speed is the point, but you get a little faster at drawing and cleaning up your work. Right? And uh, maybe there's one more chickadee right here on top of Cat's Paw. Because these chickadees, I think, have figured out Whoops, these chickadees have figured out that this cat is bringing seed to help them out. Maybe we'll put a seed in that chickadee's mouth. I've been watching them as they grab their little seeds, fly off, and oh, we'll put one in this one too. You know what they do though? They, I'm gonna draw one in here. You can find any space, any space on, on your branches that fits within those margins, within that frame. And they hold the seed in their foot here and they peck up and down on it, break the case, and then they can eat it or they can hide it around in the yard there. Maybe a couple more birds flying because we've got a lot of space here. I'm just going to quickly draw those wings because you can't see the wings when they're flying, right? I mean, it's just a blur. You can see them, but you can't see the details on them. So bzz, 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 bzz. fly in here, fly in. Bzz, 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 bzz. Maybe one's like zzz, 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 looping around here. You kind of go out and meet the birds in your neighborhood and watch how they fly around and see what their flight paths are. Maybe this one zoop, flew through the bird feeder. Zoop. They basically do that on my feeder. 
incoming, outgoing, constant eating, changing, burning calories, staying warm. Maybe we need some cold weather ice crystals in the loose areas in here. I'm not trying to just fill up space. I'm trying to use the space to communicate something about the environment, the characters, the actions. And that's starting to fill up. You notice how it's kind of filling up with all this movement, all these different things. Um, oh, I was going to put like a, a, a cap on my hat, a cap on my cap, but now I don't think I need it. So this cat's going to have birds keeping it warm there. All right, so I'm going to shift gears now. Um, you can keep drawing, you can keep adding details all you want. I'm going to shift gears now and actually start to ink. This, this star, remember, read, means have somebody read your work back to you. That's when you're drawing comics, telling stories. Always get someone to read it back to you so you can make sure you catch the little any little errors that you need to fix. But for a picture like this, I'm going to start inking it. I might not finish inking it, but um, I'll show you my inking tools. These are the standard ones I've been using. So I'll set the pencil aside. I still have an eraser if I need to clean things up. Um, I have my thin line flare felt tip pen, and I have my chisel tip marker. Actually, I think today this would be really fun. Since this cat is so big, I can, uh, I've can. i been reading Walt Kelly comics lately, so I can take some Walt Kelly style approaches and try my chisel tip to get a nice thick line outlining cat's body here. This won't look at all like Walt Kelly's pogo, but I can still adapt those those um, cartooning techniques. Let's see, where the line starts thin, gets thicker, that kind of gives the arm some body, some weight, right? And I'm just going around the outside of my character. Now, I'm not going to do the snow, because I think this line would be a little too heavy for that snow. But I will do the, the parts of the character that have their own sort of standalone, anything that kind of stands alone and pops out at you, the way my hands pop out at you in front of the paper, right? This dark line can kind of help give you that sense as you look at the picture. Maybe the edge of the coat here pops out a little. This arm definitely pops out a little. Maybe I'll give that the, the rope of the bird feeder a little space in the line, so I'll kind of break the line there. There we go, that hand. Maybe I'll give each of those fingers a little, there we go. I'll make that more of a little, little clenched paw. Doesn't have to be super realistic, but it's kind of nice if you add those details in that help people see it. Maybe I'll outline the bird feeder because that's a real jump out at you kind of shape. I want it to kind of jump out and everything else to fade into the background. The birds are so small, I'm gonna have to use my thin line felt tip. Pen. Oh, Liz, Liz loves the smiling cat. Yeah, thank you, Liz. As you know, as a cartoonist yourself, you know, you know, one little here, I'll show you my, my demonstration. I, I, I always say, you know, cartooning is so simple. One little change of detail totally changes the whole meaning of every other line. Every line in the picture depends on every other line in really powerful ways. The example here would be if I slightly change the angle of these two little lines, then the whole picture takes on a different meaning, right? The whole, the cat's smile means something different. The fact that the birds are coming to this feeder means something really different. So I, I, I don't know if that's an inspiring holiday card idea. So maybe I'll stick with this, where the cat looks kind of hopeful, hopefully not too sad with a smile, but hopeful. I might play with the smile a little just to see if I can get it a little sweeter. Now it's kind of goofier. I kind of like the idea of a goofy cat. It's a little less threatening to these birds. Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> it's a bit more of a goofy cat. As If you're playing with your cartooning, then you're going to discover things about your characters. And you'll discover things about the style you're using. I mean, they, the style you're using kind of determines the character. Oh, I just had an idea. What about instead of drawing lines, what if I gave this scarf like some texture, like it was hand knit? I have a couple scarves that were hand knit by people in my family, people I love, people I remember. So it makes me think of that. And it's like I'm 
I'm putting a little more of myself into this by remembering like a hand knit scarf and then putting that texture into the picture. And I love that people think cartooning so simple, it must be easy. But, you know, if you're like putting your lived experience into this very, very simple picture, it's not easy. And it can be it can be very powerful, too, if you if you choose the details carefully. Now this cat is wearing a scarf knit by somebody, maybe out of Angora cat fur, by a beloved aunt or something like that. Is Angora a cat? No, that's a rabbit, isn't it? What is what is the name for uh, cats that create fur for scarves? Um, hmm. All right, so round teeth, so the cat doesn't look too hungry or scary. It looks nice and friendly to me. Thank you to my Massachusetts friends for suggesting cats because I was going to draw blue jays today, but the moment I saw your suggestion of cats, I thought, that's what I'm going to draw. And like I said, you can be a cat in your picture. You can be a, a rabbit. You can be a, another bird. I like the idea of like a big bird uh, putting a bird feeder out for little realistic birds. Kind of connects us all. This gives me a sense of connection to these little chickadees. I'm going to ink a couple chickadees and then, um, and then, uh, oh, Liz likes the smile, the different smile. Thanks. Um, I'm going to ink a couple chickadees and then maybe we'll be done with this video um, cause, cause it is uh, lunchtime, but we can finish inking it later now that we've started it together and I will post it over on the Patreon. Um, and that I'll post that link. That link should be with the video, right? Patreon.com slash Merrick Bennett. That's where I'm posting all my newest artwork um, and, and invitations to these live draws and then resource links too. Um, Cause I, I do research about, you know, if I'm drawing chickadees, I'll do some research on chickadees because you always find out stuff that you didn't know that help you cartoon these little critters. Like the whole idea of picking up seeds um, pecking them, getting the shell off them, and then flying off and hiding them around the trees. I didn't realize that's what they were doing till I started cartooning them, did a little research, and uh, the bird expert said that's what they did. And I said, what, really? I haven't seen that. So then I went and I hung out by the feeder and I watched them. And sure enough, that's what they were doing. I've been watching them all week. And come get the seeds from the feeder. I thought they were just eating them, but no, they... They peck the shell off and they fly up into the trees. And if you watch, if you take a couple minutes and just patiently watch, you'll actually see where they're hiding the seeds. And they'll hide a single chickadee, a single bird, you know, not just chickadees, but the uh, tit mice and, and a bunch of the smaller songbirds. They'll, they'll, they'll hoard these seeds all around the yard thousands and thousands of them. They're not eating all those seeds they take out of the bird feeder. They're, they're hiding them for, for worse winter weather later on, which is so cool to see them sort of thinking ahead, planning for the winter, remembering where they hid stuff. That's beyond me most days. I can't even remember when I clean my desk. I can't even remember where I put stuff. Their lives depend on it. All right, so that string goes through the hand, comes around in front of the sleeve, around in front of the sleeve, behind the sleeve, front of the sleeve, behind the sleeve, around. It's a nice little tangle. Now, if you don't like the look of that broken sleeve line, you can add the ink right through. Just let it go right through if you, if you think that looks better. Whatever your sleeve is doing, that looks fine to my eye. You know, we have an option here. If we want the snow to look really light, I might use like a dotted line like this. Let's just see how that looks for the snow drift. Oh, I kind of like that. Kind of like that because it's less it's even less dark than the thin lines on the cat because i want the cat to seem darker the snow to seem lighter the other option i have here i think for the trees i'm going to go back to my thick line right what do you think that'll that'll make the trees pop out and look really dark the other option i have here because i drew this margin around here i could actually ink a little frame maybe a little decorative frame that makes it a little more like a picture I'll definitely, um, 
before I'm done, I'll, I'll put a little date. Maybe I'll just say like 18 December, getting close to the solstice, 20. Sign my name, put a little symbol, like heart, piece, whatever, use a little star. Um, maybe I'll put a little heart in here, a little symbol. Um, and when I'm done, I'm going to come through with the eraser, right? And I'll erase all these pencil lines, give my ink a couple minutes to dry, especially in the winter if it's colder, like it's colder in my studio here. So the ink needs a few extra minutes to dry. See, that's smudging slightly. I'm going to wait a little while. And I'll go through the whole picture, clean it up. Then I can, um, I can actually make copies of it. And um, if I'm giving gifts or if I'm sending holiday cards, this makes a beautiful holiday card that you drew with your own hand. And then you can hand color all the copies to make them unique and special. Um, and I'm doing that, sending these out to patrons, my own holiday cards. Um, I'm working on some more bird minis. So I will um, finish those up. Um, here we're exploring what they're doing and how. So I will finish those up and uh, post those over at the Patreon. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Merry Christmas to Ms. Haler's class. Happy solstice, happy Hanukkah to everybody. Um, Where's my card? I'll post these over at the Patreon. Head on over there if you want to see the final product. Thank you, everybody, for drawing with us. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, thanks for all your suggestions. And um, be watching for more live draws coming soon. We'll post the invites over there at the Patreon. Thanks, folks.